Air Force Systems Command, Aeronautical Systems Division, on 27 April 1972, initiated contracts for modification of eight Teledyne Ryan AQM-34G RPVs to BGM-34B configuration. Objectives of this program were to design and develop a remotely piloted strike support weapon system with modifications and improvements over the BGM-34A. The remotely piloted vehicles were modified with larger control surfaces and full-time proportional flight control systems for asymmetric flight with stores. Also installed was an improved data link and automatic two-axis antenna. Fuel capacity was increased to improve range, and a higher thrust J69T41A engine replaced the standard J69T29 engine. The BGM-34B has two nose configurations, the TV targeting system for the Maverick and Stubby Hobo weapons, and the laser target designator configuration for the Mark 81 self-propelled air-to-surface munition SPASM. The RPVs were transported by DC-130 to the 6514th Test Squadron at Hill Air Force Base, Utah, where assembly and system checkout were accomplished. Operational and instrumentation facilities were set up at the Dugway Proving Ground, Wendover Ranges. The BGM-34B flight test target area was laid out in a valley about 20 miles west of Michaels Airfield. Surplus Army trucks and tanks used as targets were spaced out along a 400-yard stretch of roadway. The RPV ground control van and other range equipment were located approximately 8.3 miles east of the targets. Ground control flight tests were conducted from this site. Air control flights were conducted from the prototype Tactical Air Command DC-130 Strike Air Director. A standard MCGS RPV control van was modified for multiplex commands to accommodate proportional flight control. A 525-945 line television system was installed and a weapon fire control position added. The flight control and weapon delivery system is operated by a two-man crew, the RPV control officer and the weapon control officer. Delivery of live stores was made after several RPV and range systems checkout flights were completed. During the test program, 21 sorties were flown with both inert and live weapons. For the most part, mission profiles were basically the same. The RPVs were launched at about 17,000 feet on a northerly heading and flown to the north side of the range. Here the RPV controller dives the RPV to mission altitude of about 1,000 to 2,000 feet and turns the RPV into the target area. As the RPV approaches the target area, the weapon control officer acquires the target on the nose TV system and advises the RPV controller as to heading corrections to assure straight RPV ground track to the target. When the target has been recognized and verified and is in the weapons firing box, the weapon control officer commands weapon launch. The RPV control officer trims the vehicle for asymmetrical flight and flies back to the north side of the range for a re-attack.
after the second weapon is launched, the RPV control officer climbs the RPV out and flies it to a recovery area. recovery is commanded and a mid-air retrieval is made. The RPD is then returned to maintenance and prepared for its next mission. As a cost savings option, 14 weapons fired did not have live warheads, but in all categories tested, weapons were delivered successfully to the target. As in this fourth mission of RPV-007, inert TV Mavericks were used. The target acquisition video from the RPV is good. and the target was recognized and verified by the weapon control officer. Number one, the left-hand Maverick, is launched at 1,800 feet AGS. On re-attack, the right side weapon is launched at 1,000 feet AGS. Both weapons scored hits on the target bank. Both Mark 81 spasm weapons and the hobos proved to be effective weapons when integrated with the laser target designator and TV RPV systems, respectively. During this daylight mission of RPV-004, flight number three, Two self-propelled air-to-surface munitions were ripple-launched six seconds apart. Using a ground laser to designate the target, weapon number one secured a direct hit. Weapon number two missed, being launched out of zone. Targets were impacted by both inert and live hobos. After successful inert missions, a live warhead hobo was delivered on 17 May 1974. The target, a two and a half ton truck, was acquired and identified. The weapon launched into the firing box at 2,000 feet AGL and continued to a direct hit on the target. On 22 March 1974, a tactical air command crew launched and controlled RPV-003 from their DC-130. Firing a live Maverick weapon with a direct hit on another two and a half ton truck target. August 23rd, a night clear mission was flown. The target, designated by the RPV's laser, was acquired and the weapon launched. The first weapon impacted short of the target. On re-attack, the second weapon hit its target area. This was the final mission scheduled in the BGM 34B program. The information obtained from this program has verified the RPV concept and subsystem requirements for the next generation of defense suppression strike RPVs.